I want to tell you all a little story. We're going to start it like this. You see this handsome guy right here on the screen, right here. But this guy is also this guy, okay? And this guy was in a group called Crooked Letters with another Jacksonian that y'all know by the name of David Banner. And we had an album that we put out in 2000. And something very pivotal happened to me during that time. I want to tell y'all the story. During this time of me being a hip hop artist, I was writing for a daily newspaper. And I was writing columns for this newspaper in the weekend section. And I was writing about things that were really important to me. I was writing about social issues. I was writing about political issues. I was writing about things that were really uh, inspiring to me. I was being a bit controversial. And then I was also writing about things that affected me as a black man in Mississippi. And one day, the editor came to me and she said, Cos, we want you to just write about music. We want you to do album reviews. We want you to you know, to talk about concerts and things of the area. And of course, that's not what I wanted to use that platform for. So of course, being me, I asked her, you know, why is it you guys want me to change or redirect my focus? And her response 15 years ago was what shaped me being in front of you guys today. She said to me that my editors told me that no one wants to hear what a rapper has to say about anything. He should just write about music and do album reviews, and he probably did his hand like that, the little shoo-shoo hand thing, when he was talking to at the same time. And it was at that moment that I realized that I need to go on this crusade to try to impress upon people the importance of hip hop and how to change their preconceived notions and their perceptions of hip hop and hip hop artists and, and who these people are. Hip hop possesses within it the power for transformational change, but that can only happen if people are willing to expand their ideals of what hip hop is, that it's easy, that it doesn't take any talent or intelligence to do, that it's not music, people need to change their perceptions about that. But we're here to celebrate innovative ideas. This is liftoff, right? Right? So we're going to talk about ideas that can help communities here. Now, hip hop is not a rapping bumblebee on a Honey Nut Cheerios commercial. And hip hop is not doing the whip it nay nay on an exercise video, it's not that. But if you ask a lot of people a lot of times what their impression of hip hop is, if you ask them to close their eyes and come up with what a hip hop artist looks like, this is gonna be the image that they come up with. The imposing black guy that's got chains and rings and sagging pants or he's toting guns and he's spewing misogyny and he's spewing profanity. But then there's that elephant in the room and there's that element of hip hop that people don't want to talk about and it's what really, really, really pisses off middle America and it's when people really started trying to separate themselves from hip hop. It was that image. You see, as long as hip hop was confined to the five boroughs and Fifth Ward, Houston and Compton, California, people didn't really have a problem with it. But as soon as it reached middle America and as soon as it reached the suburbs and as soon as you started having white kids dressing like this, now we've got a problem. But see, you can't shun something that is the live stream of impoverished and underprivileged America. This is hip hop, and this is what this is all about. Our hip hop producers, our writers, our promoters, we are the new critical thinkers in this age. And we are people that you need to bring to the table. Case in point, this is Disha Dyer. And Disha Dyer is the White House Social Secretary. She is responsible for putting the social calendar together for the president and the first lady. It's a pretty important job, right? Right? Okay. Disha is a real heavyweight in the hip hop world. She wrote for Double XL, she wrote for Vibe, she wrote for the Source magazine. So when she got this job, I was really excited, but I was also wondering what the reaction on the internet was going to be when she got this job. And of course, as we all know, the internet never disappoints, does it? So I searched the internet and I found a couple of these right here. There's no way a hip hop reporter from Philly could possibly be qualified to understand the cultural nuances required to do this job without embarrassing the US. Or better yet, a hip hop reporter, maybe she'll hand out some gold chains, gold toothies, and a bottle of Cristal to everyone along with some twerking lessons. Now, it's a little bit of disrespect with a little bit of misogyny too as well, you know, just thrown in for taste, but these are the kind of things 
that people in the hip hop generation and hip hop culture have to deal with because people don't think that we're able to do the important jobs. This is Chase Smith, better known as Rhyme Fest. And Rhyme Fest is a Grammy Award winning hip hop artist. He wrote, co wrote, Jesus Walks with Kanye West, is somebody that we all know in this room, right? Rhyme Fest decided that he was going to be the chains in Chicago. And he decided that he was going to run for 20th Ward Alderman in Chicago, okay? And when he ran, his opponents, par for the chorus, used hip hop as a means to try to downgrade and disrespect his campaign. He was bombarded by criticisms from people who said that he could not be an alderman because he was a hip hop artist. But more than any other genre, folks, hip hop permeates all facets of society, black, white, young, old, Christian, Protestant, Republican, Democrat. You need to bring hip hop artists to the table. And most folks look at this in a very superficial sense. It's cultural snobbery, as I call it. We're talking about a genre that's 40 years old, that's birthed in the same vein as jazz and blues. And what a lot of people don't understand right now, hip hop is now Mississippi's biggest musical export. I'm gonna say that again. Hip hop is now Mississippi's biggest musical export. It's crazy for you not to have us at that table because along with it comes entrepreneurship, business acumen, social consciousness, economic development, and cultural diversity. Public relations and all those other things that come with it. Hip hop is power of influence. It's the streets to the corporate suites. You have hip hop artists who have the same business minds as your Fortune 500 CEOs because they know how to what? Create a product. They know how to troubleshoot that product. They know how to market that product. They know how to interact with the consumer. And they know how to take that product and use it to better their community and their surroundings around them. And the funny thing about it is we've had a lot of people come step up on the stage today. I think Jim Barksdale was up here this morning. But imagine that there is an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old kid right now with his laptop in a makeshift studio in his apartment or in his closet or in his mother's basement that has the same business attributes as the CEO of a Fortune 500 company and all he needs is an opportunity to sit at that very table. All he needs is a chance to bring that acumen to the table. If you are creating a process to build your community, if you're creating a process to build this booming metropolis that you have, then you have to bring hip hop to the table. In the next 10 years, every facet of society is going to be helmed by someone who was a part of hip hop culture. And I'm not talking about fans, I'm not talking about casual fans that listen to the radio. I'm talking about in the next 10 years, you're going to have a mayor, a city councilman, a vice president, a supervisor, a representative, a senator. You're gonna have a principal who was once an MC, who was once a DJ, who was once a b-boy. Y'all still with me? Y'all yeah. still with me? Yeah. Hip hop is not something that you do, it's not something that you just put away when you turn a certain age. The tenements of hip hop stay with you if you are immersed in that culture. I am going to be 65 years old riding around with my grandkids in my car listening to hip hop on whatever means, because by that time, you'll probably be able to like touch your temple and be able to play music in your brain by that time. <laughs> But when I'm 65 years old, I'm going to be riding around listening to hip hop because it's not something that you put away, it's something that you live. And what we all know is, is that sometimes when there's something that people don't understand, the first thing that they do with their fear mechanism is to disrespect it and to shun it. So instead of disrespecting and shunning it, maybe it's time that we brought these folks to the table so we can kind of learn and understand the angst that these kids speak. Let's see here. Everybody know this gentleman right here? It's Andy Warhol. And in 2008, Elizabeth Kernett wrote a book called The Warhol Economy. Anybody ever read that book? That's cool. <laughs> and they talked about how art and music and culture shaped New York City. And it asked a very important question, and I'm going to ask that question to you guys today, and you take it with you when you leave out of here today. What's more important to a city? Is it big buildings? 
Is it a bustling downtown? Or is it the clubs and the pubs where hip hop artists and creative artists dwell? Where do those ideas ferment? And if you read this book, you will find that in a Warhol economy, it is the creative industry that drives a city. Not big buildings, not bustling downtowns, not politicians, not uh, contractors, not developers. It's the creative industry. We're talking about a $700 billion a year business worldwide. The top cultural and social influencer for kids 18 all the way up to folks 55 years old, 18 to 55. You're crazy if you're not building a city and not having these people at the table with you. Why not leverage that power? Why not leverage that influence and create partnerships and create collaborations with those that do this genre of music in your town. What a difference a generation makes, y'all. Everybody remember when Dan Quayle and Tipper Gore and C. Dolores Tucker had their war on hip hop? They were steamrolling CDs and cassettes. Well, we now have a presidential candidate, I guess an off and on candidate, Marco Rubio, who says that hip hop is the mirror of America. He's a Tupac fan and an unapologetic Tupac fan. Jay-Z was a VIP guest at President Obama's inauguration. Hip hop has become a part of Americana. So what's our takeaway from this? When we're talking about hip hop, I was born in the city of Jackson, raised in the city of Jackson. I'm gonna die in the city of Jackson. I've got love for this city that can't be rivaled by a lot of people. And I know there are a lot of people like myself in other cities and people that are listening out there to me right now that are in a city where they have for decades Watch the politicians and watch the people in power do the same thing over and over and over, say it with me, and over and over and over again, expecting a different result. It is by definition insanity. Different events, same people at the table, same ideas, you get the same results but let's keep these hip hop kids away from the cave to the table because their ideas are way too controversial. It's probably the dumbest thing that I've ever heard. When you're talking about hip hop, our future here and everywhere with our young people is way too important to marginalize. Hip hop is the social measuring stick. We have value, it has value. And when you bring hip hop to the table, you bring the heart and soul of the very people that politicians and CEOs and urban planners are trying to bring to the table so that they can check their pulse. When you bring hip hop to the table, you're bringing the streets to the table. And you're bringing the very people that you need to help influence a blossoming economy. So if you're talking about liftoff, if we're talking about liftoff today and we're talking about ideas that's gonna create a blossoming metropolis, you must have hip hop at the table. You need hip hop at the table. Peace and power. Thank y'all.